six figures and still broke. Those are those are real headlines and I'm still very confused how those are headlines and I'm not joking like if you literally just google six figures and broke you will see some of the top results will say hey where you can earn six figures and still be broke which will get to location that's a very real thing how to make a six-figure salary and still be broke uh once you make six figures you need to worry more about your money no duh you need to worry about your money at any income that you make why so many millennials making six-figure salaries still feel broke yeah that's what we're talking about today because you can make six figures and you would think that you should be able to afford sneakers and other things that you want, but no, people are still living like a really broke life. Now I know I tend to do non-traditional content over here, separate from just sneakers, but also talking about money and just basic financial literacy and the things we're not taught, but they definitely should be taught, especially in sneakers. We're in a high consumerism space. We like to buy a lot of things. That's not really all that good for us, but you know what? We love what we love and this happens to be the vice for a lot of us but you should not go broke. You shouldn't go broke for sneakers or anything for that matter. And a lot of young adults and older adults, they are fortunate enough to earn six figures, right? That's a number a lot of people want to get to, but yet and still again, they feel broke as if they really aren't making anywhere close to six figures. Now, I think people tend to also forget the average like medium income or median income in this country is actually $60,000. Yeah. It's 60,000. It's not six figures. So I know you see six figures thrown around all the time, but no, like the average person is actually only making $60,000 a year. Now, I still think based on where you choose to live, you can live off of $60,000 and still be just fine. Now, once you want, you choose to tack on a home, a car, kids, location. Yeah, all of that changes. I'm on Business Insider right now, and they have that article that says, here's why so many millennials making six figure salaries still feel broke. And I'll be sure to go ahead and put that link in the description box of this video. Apparently they call these millennials Henry's. Uh, the Henry's typically earn over $100,000 are largely millennials. Why are we always attacked in everything <laughs> and struggle to balance their saving and their spending habits? And it says that Henry's fall victim to lifestyle creep. That is certainly a real thing. I've touched on that before on this channel and I'll likely get back to it again but it's a comfortable and expensive lifestyle that you want and if you're not careful it starts to really just overtake the earning power you finally have for it to do anything for you in the right now and in the future. Now, even some people earning a good income, like over six figures, uh, they share part of their lives on YouTube, very similar to myself, not in relation to what I earn, but I share my life on YouTube. They share part of their lives on YouTube and they've actually come on here and said, hey, like I earn over six figures and my family and I were still in the red every single month. We'll get back to that later. But certainly if you're a single individual and you're earning, I don't know, anywhere from 75 up to 100K, you should be able to have a nice place to live and lay your head at night and a vehicle that gets you to and from where you need to go or be able to afford public transportation or just transportation in general uh be able to go out to eat you know every now and then with your friends like who doesn't want to do that listen you guys know that i enjoy okay cookies ice cream all that who doesn't want to go and be able to do that buy sneakers you guys know i'm all about living you can also enjoy today and plan ahead for tomorrow that means living for some of today's sneaker releases okay if they catch your eye why not treat yourself to a few of them i mean hey I have the uh, I have the Grey Day 990 V4 on the way. I'm so excited for that. Okay, back to the actual video itself. But shouldn't you be able to do those things? I would think so. And I fully understand if you add another party to the mix, you now have a significant other. Uh, yes, you, you now have two incomes or maybe you don't because there is also this trend where girlfriends want to stay at home. I would be very bored and lose my mind. But there is this trend where some girlfriends will stay at home where just one person works and the other person does not work. Okay, so we still have a really high income, but then you have, yeah, you add kids to the mix. That's gonna balloon all of your expenses. But even yet and still, if you have two high income earners, shouldn't you be okay? You would think so, you would be wrong apparently. And there are two really quick things here that we can go over because I think they play the biggest factors. Number one, where you live is everything. If you choose to live in a high cost of living area or city, you know that you're automatically straining your income's power. Location is everything. Pick somewhere sensible that leaves room to budget to travel to a lot of different places while managing a reasonable fixed overhead day to day. Number two, your income is everything, but your behavior of how you actually spend and manage your income is even more important. I mean, no matter what you actually earn, if you are spending more in line with more than what you bring home, no matter what, yes, you're going to feel broke. You may think, how do people even easily spend more than they make? Like, isn't that a really easy concept to keep in line and, and manage really well? No, no, it's not. Let's find out why. I'm sure you've heard this before, but housing is usually the biggest expense for everyone. So if your housing expenses 
or well over 30% of your take home pay, you're well on your way to be stressed financially. And let's be honest, a lot of us want to live the American dream. I like to think of it as a nightmare at this point, but you have a house and then you have that high car note because you deserve the car of your dreams at 500 plus dollars a month for 72 months. Yeah, that's the term a lot of people get these days. Uh, you see your friends, sneaker, YouTubers, influencers, and anyone else you follow copping every must have. And they told you that you better not sleep so you don't. Now you're spending $800 a month on sneakers, which could easily rack up high interest credit card debt. And finally, America's adoption of easy and convenient food delivery services. It is so bad. Because fun fact, being a high earner doesn't mean you know how to manage a damn dime of it. Before we leave, remember the YouTuber I said we'd get back to? Yeah, he shared he earns over 120K and although his wife doesn't work, the amount of reckless eating out and not planning for expected one-off expenses and vacations they're charging instead of planning for means they're in the red. I mean, if you watch his full video all the way through, I'll be sure to link it below, you start to see where they dip into the red, meaning their account is negative. So that red there beneath the actual charge per item or category he's listing off, those charges are still coming in. Those expenses are still rolling in, yet they don't have any more money left in the month. So they go well over $400 negative, I'm pretty sure. And I said, this person is not really paycheck to paycheck. Their household is not really paycheck to paycheck. He's able to put thousands of dollars away in his employer match 401k. If you were really paycheck to paycheck, you don't even have the gap to be able to put thousands of dollars towards that. No, you are really barely able to survive until that next payday. And even then you're barely scraping by. That's really paycheck to paycheck. I guess I'm saying all of this to say, especially to the young adults that watch my channel and watch so many other uh, creators, you just watch people in general. Like we really can just people watch on social media all day. Don't automatically assume because someone is a high earner or they have a really high income that they have it together. Someone could be making $40,000 a year or $400,000 a year. I'll be honest with you. And yes, if you're only earning $40,000, that's likely going to cause an income problem, not a spending problem, but more so an income problem. So as you continue to go on, you can work and develop that experience and get your actual income up. But the principle still stands. Somebody earning $40,000 or $400,000, if they don't know how to manage it, it doesn't matter what the actual amount is, they're still going to struggle. So I I don't care if someone is earning $400,000. If they're spending like they earn $600,000, guess what I would still advise them to do? Not official financial advice. Maybe pull back on eating out and vacations and spending on a credit card and doing anything until you actually get your house in order. You pay down that high interest debt. You get a budget in place. You have an emergency fund in place, no matter what, especially with this economy right now. And you act as if you have some sense and some maturity with your income. We all want things and a lot of times those things will extend far beyond what we actually bring home every single month. That's where you being an adult come in. When I say don't act your shoe size, I say act your actual age. You have to do that. That's where that comes into play, okay? I want a lot of things. I can't sit here and responsibly buy every single thing that I want. I will likely be in credit card debt like the rest of this country and the average in this country, average person in this country, they're carrying $5,000 worth of credit card debt. Please don't do that. I don't want you to be that person. I want you to enjoy some of the sneaker releases that dropped today because you really love them and you have a connection to them and you, they fit you, your style. But I also want you to be able to take care of any emergency that comes up today without having to sell a shoe on the secondary market. I would love for you to be able to just say, hey, this is an inconvenience. I'm going to pull money from my emergency fund over the next few months. I'm going to replace that money and I'm still going to make sure that I am enjoying the little things and I'm planning ahead for tomorrow. So that's all I got for this video. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully it took something valuable from it. As always, act your age, not your shoe size. Peace.